Hello everyone, my name is Ash, and welcome to another trailer breakdown for the latest Inquisitor and Companions trailer for Dragon Age Inquisition, a show of three companions for the Inquisitor, Iron Bull, Sarah, and Dorian. If you have not seen the trailer yet, I highly suggest checking it out on Dragon Age's official YouTube channel, link is in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. In the last trailer breakdown, I explained some of the speculation of the ESRB rating. The recently released ESRB's rating summary definitely goes deeper into the context of what Inquisition will offer. Cutscenes will depict some characters being, quote, impaled or getting their throats slit, as well as blood and cries of pain present, all indicative of intense violence. I previously mentioned also that nudity being different in comparison to Origins and Dragon Age 2 having only partial nudity. Trying to avoid as many spoilers here, but in the rating summary, there will be characters that are either, quote, topless or have exposed buttocks while lying in bed or after sex, as well as very, uh, raunchy dialogue straight from the game featured in the example. It goes beyond PG-13, and you should probably check it out on the ESRB page yourself. Link is in the description below. Moving on, we begin with a pan of the Inquisitor looking at a keep. However, that keep has a Fade Rift active in the back, a location that is most likely ridden with demons. In this trailer, there are a lot of shots with the Inquisitor and party simply attacking Red Templars, Venatori, and demons, so I'll opt out of boring you with all the details unless something else draws attention in the shot. Later, the Inquisitor stands at what looks irrefutably like Knight Commander Meredith's sword from Dragon Age 2, the sword that came from a small piece of red lyrium that made Bartrand, Varric's brother, go mad. With him, multiple wardens standing by, as well as what looks like Stroud on the Inquisitor's left, and demons. Off camera, Sarah and Bull are waiting. Note, however, that no one is in battle stance. The wardens are stationary, the demons are complacent. Everyone is holding, and the only thing that looks dead is the corpse in the middle of all of them. As the Inquisitor tears open the already weakened veil in this area, everyone just peers ahead. But why would the Grey Wardens and Demons be in collusion? That's for us to find out. In a different area where party fights well-armored, indistinguishable men, who will most likely appear later in this video. Spoilers. A fight between the party and some armored corpses. A Red Templar shield is pinned on the ground, and swords are sticking out of it. Also, there seems to be what looks like an altar at the top left. The area itself is a wooden structure that seems to be burned down or ruined because of the war. Even a ballista is at the top. While I do want to say that there's a possibility of necromancy happened here, what's more likely is that the Fade in this area is weak enough for the demons poured out of here and corpses from the battle continue to linger and fester. A fight with the Red Templars and Iron Bull's wonderful circus pants. It's kind of entertaining to see that despite most human, elven, dwarven warriors are all clad in heavy armor, Kanari and, and in particular Bull, just kind of go whatever and wear the bare minimum. Bull only has a little shield armoring on his left shoulder and is wearing very clothy pants. It's like he doesn't care or just wants to be comfortable. Scars make the man at least, considering there are a lot on his body, and he's unafraid of showing those battle marks. Switching to the desert and a very distinct night sky with a huge moon appearing in the background, with the Inquisitor fighting a Red Templar behemoth and another demon. More Red Templars at Empris du Lion. You see a Templar in the back lit on fire by a mage off screen, most likely Dorian. You can also just catch the silhouette of Sarah walking from the left screen while in stealth. A specific area with more informative detail as marked by the banner and its glowing light while on the right screen. The glow is only indicative that it's interactive while playing the game, which usually shows a codex entry. An area where a decrepit soldier corpse fighting Cassandra and Varric. Judging by the green waves spilling from his head, this entity comes from the Fade or is empowered by it. The fog itself in this area may indicate that the veil is weak here, however it can also indicate a rift mage is present in the party. The party at what possibly is the original explosion of the breach. Corpses are lit and scattered across the ground, deformed in a way that they had no time to flee and were likely burned to death. The introduction for Iron Bull, who in general Kanari tradition wears armor that isn't restrictive at all, switching to Bull fighting the Red Templars head on. Then, an enemy changed to men in green and gold armor. They'll be popping again multiple times in this trailer, but take notice here the lion armoring of the one man. 
I had initially believed them to be part of the free man faction, which we just found out not too long ago, but another key figure pops out very soon. Some are demons fighting against Iron Bull, Dorian, Sarah, and the default Garrett Hawk in the Fade. Notice here you don't see the Inquisitor. This is the first instance of Hawk in the trailer, but definitely not the last. Notice the contraption on the left with the item that looks like a compass with the sky glass on the top. This indicator actually states that the player can set up camp in this area. If you defeat the Red Templars here, you can safely set up camp for the Inquisition to gain power and hold some dominance over the region. More fighting with Bull, Sarah, Dorian, and Hawk. There's a small body in the distance that looks kind of like a dwarf, which I want to say is the Dwarven Inquisitor, but as we haven't even seen a Dwarven Inquisitor or really any non-human Inquisitor being used in one of these types of cinematic trailers, not the gameplay trailers, but the cinematic trailers. It's more likely that it's an enemy or an NPC. But in any case, Hawk appearance number two. Namely, fighting examples of Red Templars, demons, even more Red Templars, and the Venatori. Or lesions? That's what I get from this take, as you see a warrior with a great Orlesian shield, the distinctly elegant blue and gold shield, and the headdress that has red feathers poking out while coupled with two other enemies we've seen earlier in this trailer, the green and gold. I'm inclined to believe these hostile men as Gaspard de Chalon's men. In other words, Grand Duke Gaspard de Chalon, the men who's trying to overthrow Empress Celine out and become the new Orlesian leader. These men pictured here seem like chevaliers. A conversation with the Iron Bull and quite possibly members from his mercenary group, Bull's Chargers, in the back left. It's a closer look into the scars across Bull's body, as well as the red and green circus pants he likes wearing so much. Also note how the blood on the Inquisitor's sword and armor stays intact. While past Dragon Age games offered the opportunity to disable blood spatter from battle, the option was to keep blood consistently on the character, so that NPCs actually recognize that you have a lot of blood on you. It seems like Inquisition has that feature as well, and perhaps NPCs will be able to recognize that blood, just like the previous game or at least in Dragon Age Origins. Transitioning into Sarah's portion of the trailer, a very nice, stately, yet dark room where the Red Templars are fighting the party. And Sarah fighting in the Fade. Note the demon statues against the wall, which seem to be clawing at its own face. Something to note, when it comes to the Black City in the Fade, even the most powerful demons will not venture to it. So it's quite possible that this is a reflection of that fear. And Sarah fighting with Dorian, Bull, and Hawk against the demons. Appearance number three. No Inquisitor in sight yet again. More of the fight against the Red Templar in close quarters. This place seems to be in Orlay or in the Dales, as the rug that has the distinct blue color with gold and red trimmings. Sarah talks about an enemy that was all, Obey me! and gets an arrow in the face. On the ground in the back, the man looks like an Orlesian guard, or perhaps a chevalier but most likely an Orlesian guard. But definitely a building in Orle or similar as the architecture is pretty distinct. There's rubble in the ground, however, so it's very unkempt. More of the underground Orlesian area. A specific throne in front of a very distinct Templar or Seeker mural. Definitely of a female as the lips are quite pursed femininely. Perhaps this is even Andraste for all we know, depending on how far back it goes. It has a very nice green rug on the right-hand side, so whoever owns this area is at least dignified in status. The party fighting at Adamant Fortress, or rather, to be more specific, Sarah, Dorian, and Hawk. Hawk sighting number four, and not even the Fade this time. More of the underground from earlier. Sarah, Dorian, Stroud, and Hawk fighting in the Fade. Hawk sighting number five. Switching to more of Iron Bull and Sarah fighting, I find it an interesting touch that there are fossils in the sand scattered across, a very minute detail since this is the Fade. Which begs the question, can something die in the Fade and its physical body be preserved? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. In this conversation with Sarah, she notes how the person she killed was, according to her intel from the friends of Ren Jenny, someone in the Inquisition wanted dead. It's possible this is the first interaction we have with Sarah, or at least one of the very first few. In her character profile on the Dragon Age site, it's said that we find her in the streets of Relay. By streets, it could be the infiltration of a noble's house and possibly lighting a few guards along the way. All in all, arrow to the face. Shifting gears to Dorian in the front, as Hawk and Sarah are in the far back. Hawk sighting number six. 
with no Inquisitor in sight. Are you seeing a pattern here yet? More Dorian fighting with skulls on the bottom and the green fog. If you ever wanted a full cavalcade of Dorian fighting, this is your video. A spider pit where Dorian fights alongside Hawk. Alright, let's stop here. Why does Hawk appear seven times in this trailer? And for every time that he does, the Inquisitor is never there. Now don't get me wrong, when Hawk was reintroduced in the Enemy of Thetis trailer, we do see that Hawk runs up to the Inquisitor, so we do know that these two at least meet up in the Fade. However, why is it that in the actual gameplay, in the actual fighting, we don't see the Inquisitor show up at all? That at most, it's only Sarah, Dorian, Iron Bull, Stroud, and Hawk. Now this is completely speculative, and maybe a little bit of a stretch, but it's a possibility I can see happen. I think we'll be able to temporarily control Hawk as a player character in Inquisition. Of course, temporarily, but considering that we've seen most of Hawk's involvement as part of the Fade, why not give players that chance to meet the champion of Kirkwall in the flesh? It just seems so suspicious that we don't even see the Inquisitor pairing with Hawk during the each instance of these stills. And it's not from the cutscenes, we're viewing gameplay. I personally think it'd be awesome to play as Hawk one last time to catch up what happened between the Rebellion at Kirkwall and the Inquisition forming. Hell, even to find out what happened to Blondie. I think it's a great opportunity that can happen in Inquisition, and I'm all for it if it happens. Switching back to Dorian just being his damn magical self against demons, Red Templars, and the like, a scene pops up where the Inquisitor talks about Dorian expecting applause. The location is broken down and the green fog is right behind, circulating just like the spell Dorian casted during one of the gameplay videos of this year's E3 with Alexius's amulet, where everyone was overrun by the Venatori. This may very well be the result afterwards, or an alternative path where the player chose better lasting choices. Back to the Orlesians, or what may be the Orlesians, attacking Solas. It's merely the same fight, but at a different angle than before. So we do get a good look at 1. The Chevalier's armor and shield. 2. The variations of colors for these men. And 3. The consistently used lion head embedded on the front of the armor. I definitely think they're a lesion based off the attire. Plus, I think it's Gaspard's men on the account of the lack of purple that is being used to indicate nobles and soldiers loyal to the Empress. But uh, that's just me. Other than the narrator speaking on the 100 plus party combinations, a Venatori warrior briefly shows up holding his mallet with what seems to be a dragon skull and giving a war cry. Later, more Venatori at Adamant Fortress are fighting the party. So it seems that in order to capture Adamant Fortress, the Inquisition will need to clear out the Venatori forces in order to claim the keep and modify it for themselves. Another Chevalier, judging by the distinct feathers in his cap, the huge golden shield and white armor. Cutting to a revenant that is fighting. Also take notice that this is the same wooden base that was lit up earlier and occupied by armored corpses. Notice the bottom left, the stretcher with multiple skulls in them? If you think that looks familiar, you're correct. The most recent example of that is in the quest Meryl's Pride from Dragon Age 2, where those skull statues are hanging in the center mount mountain where the ancient demon is alive. The one that helped Meryl with the Illuvion. It's possible this makeshift base either unearthed some burial ground or lost area, or possibly the base was merely created over it. Whenever those skull statues show up, it's always in a location where the veil is the absolute weakest. And at the end, a demon screeching because I think for the first time we don't have a dragon in this trailer. And that's my entire breakdown for the Inquisitor and Companions trailer for Dragon Age Inquisition. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe as way more is to come, especially with some secrets lined up that will come to light very soon. Take care, everyone. My name is Ash. Thanks for watching. Ben Harrell and Ansel.